Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So this video is going to follow on from our last one where I looked at using or creating our very first user form uh, for use to an app form to do some data entry. So you remember we created this simple process so uh, ignore on the left here this is obviously the VBA window or our actual form we've developed. But at the moment if we click open form we get this uh, pop-up, uh, well not pop-up but this user form what allows us to put in a name. So let's go Nicky Nails. So you can see I've got a first name and a last name field. When we hit submit, uh, they are then added to uh, this, this list of names that we have here in column A and B. What we want to do is we're going to build upon this so that actually it's a working or it's kind of like a mini database in the sense that we can obviously add new records but also if we've got an existing record we're able to go into that record by simply double clicking on the first name which will then open the record up for us so that we can make the edits that we require. So there's a few things that we need to do to this and we'll try and cover them off in separate, separate stages as we go through. The first thing we need to do uh, to our data really is to add a unique identifier. And the reason we need that is we want to have a unique idea or a unique reference for each record in this list so that we can use that ID when it comes to identifying if we're adding a new record or if that record already exists, such as when we're trying to edit one, obviously what's in already in that list. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to move our button out of the way just to give us a bit more space. And I'm going to create another uh, field. So I'm going to do the formatting there, paste it into here, and we're going to call this employee. ID and because we've already got some existing data here let's just act, let's just remove some of this so uh, da, 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 da. let's get rid of these ones here let's move Mickey Mouse up to that one there and move a button out of the way move here and then just delete that just to make sure there is no nothing contained within those fields and for our employee ID we're going to follow the format of having the letter E standing for employee and then we're going to start our um, IDs from 1000, so we'll incrementally go up. So the first record we have here will be 1001. The next one will be E1002, E1003. Uh, so I'm literally just done that uh, for those first three there, just so we have a starting point um, to, to obviously to start from. We could obviously get rid of all these names. Um, and actually, maybe we should do that. Maybe that probably make more sense. Let's just get rid of these names that we've got here. Delete, shift shells up just to get rid of all that so we can start a complete fresh. And as I said, we've obviously just added that employee ID there just so we've got a unique identifier for each of our records. I'm also just going to change this text. So we're going to, rather than open form, we're going to call this uh, new record because we're only going to be using this button when we want to add a new record to our sheet. So, right, there's a couple of changes that we now need to make. So at the moment, we know if we hit this button, it runs, um, it's a assi or assigned to this button, so let's go into here, we can see we've got the open form um, macro. So if we then go into our module where that's stored, just double click, you can see at the moment we just have the simple instruction user form show once that button is pressed. So we need to build upon this now just so it'll obviously do the detail that we require. So we'll leave user form show there, but I'm just gonna add some rows in here uh, to get us started. So what we now need to do is we need to identify first, obviously, what is the next available row or how many rows of data are in our sheet. And that will gonna, that's going to enable us to be able to identify what reference number should be assigned to them because obviously we want to incrementally increase each time. So to do that, I'm going to go dim i last row as integer. So that allows me Obviously, it's going to store an integer value there. And lastly, because we're in the module, we need to be referencing to sheet number one in this instance. Uh, obviously, we're just going to stick with sheet number one, but obviously, you might want to be calling that something a bit more descriptive if you're doing this as a real-world example. Dim sheet one as worksheet. So we've got them done for us. So we now just need to define these two variables. So the first one is going to be set sheet one with equals sheets. Sheet one, cool, so that's that part done. And then I last row is simply going to be our, our friend that we use quite a, quite a lot, and that is going to be uh, sheet one, because we're now just defined that in that previous one there. And we're going to do cells, sheet one dot range, oh, I'm sorry, sheet one dot rows dot count, 
comma, and then we've got this in column A, close brackets, dot end, open brackets, Excel up, dot row. So what that's going to do is obviously give us how many rows basically of data we have. At the moment, this will just give us the value of number one, because obviously all we've got there in, in column A is one value, uh, which is obviously the header for us in this instance. So once we've done that, we've got the detail that we require, and we can now get rid of this user form one dot show. Um, and not completely get rid of, I'm just going to literally tidy this up by doing it within a with statement. So we can do with user form one, and we have to have end with at the end here. So the first thing we now need to do is, ah, and actually we can't do this just yet, I'm jumped ahead of myself. What we need to do is if we jump back into the user form, and we'll go double click on there. So we, as you'll notice, what we haven't done is we haven't added uh, a third uh, text box, what is gonna capture this employee ID. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this down ever so slightly, pull our submit button down as well, so we move that here. So let's go into a view uh, toolbox. There we go, we'll have what we need. So I just need to do a first one, I'm gonna create is going to be employee ID, and let's just make that a bit smaller. We don't need all that space taken up. And that looks about in the right spots. And again, my toolbox popped over there. Let's now add another text box field. So I think it's about that sort of size. Yep, yeah, perfect. And let's get rid of the toolbox. Have a look how that looks. Yeah, it looks about right. And then what we can do is also with this text box, I'm going to make this so it's um, do, 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 what am I looking for? Enabled. I'm just going to just um, make that unenabled. And I think there's another one I want as well. Uh, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going to lock it. So basically, all that means is to the user when they open this form, they're unable to do anything with this field. And that's because we're obviously going to define what that ID is in our code. And we don't want the user to be able to change what that number is. So we've now added that field. So we can go back into this module because we now have something to refer to. Um, yeah, so with user form one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go text box three. You can see that's now available there. Uh, dot text equals, and this is where we're going to define our um, ID. So we're going to define it's going to be E. So it's going to start with the letter E. And it's going to be 1000 plus uh, I last row. So what that basically means is in our I last row here, we've found out how many values are in our data. And for us, there's no data here at the moment. So all it's going to do is say there's only one row of information at the moment. Therefore, this is what is our headers. So we know row number one is our headers. Therefore, the first item we add to our list is going to be I last row. So it's going to be the number of one. So once we've done that, and obviously it's going to have the E at the front and be a thousand plus that number, uh, what will give us obviously the employee number. And then the next part we need to do with the user form is go, simply go dot show. So it's going to show the user form. So the first thing we'll do is our user form, it'll set this text box three um, with our required ID and then it will show the user form to us as well. And that is it. So having done that, we can now quickly give that a test. So module one, if we do new record, you can see it's given us our um, user form, it's popped up, and you can see we've got our first ID populated for us. So it's E1001. And as you can see, we're unable to do anything with that field. So we're unable to change it or, yeah, we, we just basically have to leave it as it is. So this time we can go with our uh, adding a record. So let's go home, uh, Simpson. And then when you go to tab, because we've unable that, uh, disabled that tab, obviously it won't go to this field, it goes straight to the submit button. So once you hit now submit, it will add Homer Simpson to our data. And you can see there's something that we forgot to do. Obviously we haven't captured and stored the employee ID. Therefore what we're gonna do is just delete this one more time because obviously that's wrong. Go delete shelf cell. So we now need to go into our user form. So go to user form and go view code. And simply the reason it didn't work is because we haven't defined obviously how to populate column Three, or column C, should I say. All we need to do here is go sheet one dot cells, and it's gonna be I last row comma uh, three. So this is the cell reference that we want to populate. So we're now looking at column C. 
the vault value of that equals text box three dot value. And it is as simple as that. And what we could do here as well, just to tidy this up as we've done it with the last one, is go with sheet one, and then we can go end with, and then we can get rid of sheet one, sheet one, sheet one, and it just tidies our code up, and it just gets us looking a bit more um, structured with our information. And also what I wanna do is just tidy this up ever so much, bring that back there, and bring that one back there as well. Oh, didn't want to do that. I want to do that. Oh. There you go, do that. <laughs> so we can now see it looks a bit more tidy there as well. So this time, if we go to add a new record, here's our user form. It's given us our employee ID, Homer Simpson, submit, and you can see our ID is now stored there as well. And let's just try another one. So this time, let's go uh, McDonald Duck. Uh, and you can see that it's identified that we've already got one record there. So the next record to add in there is going to be employee ID 1002. And there we go. And we can see we've basically got our information as we require. So that is all working perfect. We've got a new field added and we're able to add new records with a employee ID. So the next thing we now want to do is to be able to edit our record. So say we've got Donald Duck here. I can see that it's got, uh, it hasn't got a capital D. And I know you could go and change that here just by doing that, but let's say you wanted to use the form. So if you want to double click here and open the record within the user form, how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we need to now create another way of launching the form. So I'm gonna double click on sheet one and you can see at the moment we have no code entered in here. So we're going to be looking at another change event. So previously we would looked at uh, change events for when you first open, save or close a workbook. Well, this one is going to be called, or is called, before double click. So it basically means that this event will launch every time you double click in a defined range that we provide. So it looked quite familiar um, in, in the first row of this subroutine, as you'd seen in those previous change event videos. But obviously, it's going to be different uh, because it's slightly different. So we're going to go private sub worksheet and score before double click, open brackets. So we've got 5L target as range. So target is obviously the area that we're gonna be double clicking in and then cancel as boolean. So obviously if you don't click into that range, hit enter and you can see it's done the end subroutine for us as well. And let's just move them down. So we're gonna to need to use our last row finder again. So we're gonna just bring that into the equation. So we're gonna go dim i last row as integer, not interior, integer. Cool. And uh, we've got that inf important for us. So we can now do i last row equals cells. So we don't need to refer to the sheet. That's why we're not defining the, sh the sheet in this one because we're actually coding within the sheet itself. So it knows that everything ref is being ref referenced to, such as cells, is gonna be contained within this sheet. Therefore, that's why we don't need to define it, just in case you're wondering there. So we've got cells, rows.count, a, so and excel up dot row. So we've got that informed for us as well. Okay, so, We've got that information ready for us, and this is literally just gonna help us understand, well, not understand. So what we want to do with our double click is we're gonna only have it working in column A. And within column A, we're only gonna have it working within the number of rows that we have information for. So if someone was to double click in row five at the moment, nothing would happen because we have no, row, a data, no data available to us in row five. But if they double clicked in row three, then it is in a range that we want to um, obviously work with. So what we're gonna do is come down to here and we're gonna type if not intersect, intersect, open brackets, and we go target, and we've got to define what our target is. So that is going to be range A2 to A, so this is column A part, and I last row, so it's only gonna go the range of A2, so from row two, down to however many rows of data we have in that range. Obviously what's gonna to continue to grow over time is nothing then, right, cool, so if not, perfect, perfect, and we're just doing end 
if here as well. And we can tab in. So, okay, so if we do, if there is a double click that happens and it is within this defined row, so two and three as you see here, what we want to do is we want to go with user form one and with dot text box. So what we're now going to do here is, so if someone double clicks within this defined range, we want to open our user form. And not only do we want to open the user form, we want the user form to be pre-populated with the information available to us on that row that we double clicked. So what we're going to do is go text box one dot value equals cells, and it's going to be our active cell dot row and one. So what that means is, obviously, our, say we've double clicked on Donald here, this cell here, so A3, is now our active cell. So what we want to do when we're populating text box one is we want to say, okay, we want to populate text box one based on the value in this cell. And this cell is going to be active cell dot row. So it's going to say, okay, it's row three, and it's within column number one, so column A. So that's all we're going to do when we're getting the information. The next one we want to populate is go text box Text box two dot value equals cells. That's going to be the same active cell dot row, but this time we want to pull it from column two. And then the last one we've got text box three dot value. Oh, if I spell value value equals cells, and it's going to be active cell dot row is going to be from column three. And then the last thing we now need to do, having populated the user form, is to show it to the user so that they can see the user form with that information readily populated. Once that's all done, we can then remove these. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just enter a row in here as cancel equals true. So do that. And what that'll just basically mean is when you obviously double click into a cell, obviously you now you don't want to be able to get, you don't want to be stuck in the cell. It obviously it just moves that away for us. So what we can do is we do that. So you can see at the moment, you can double click and actually be in the cell to edit. Whereas if we do this cancel as true, obviously you can't actually double click into a cell. That's all it basically means. And it just makes it easier using. So say you were to double click into a cell, enter some information and then come to move away from it. You have to then click away from the cell uh, before it's usable again. And I've probably made that quite hard to understand, but the, the benefit of using this is obviously this single line of code here. But if you still want your users to have to double click into the cell, all you need to do is just delete or comment out this row here. So let's have a look at what we've now got available to us here. So if you want to do a new record, we can do new record. It's going to pick up that the next ID should be 1003. And we can call this one uh, Mickey Mouse, sit submit, and you can see that the record is there. If we now go and double click in row six, seven or eight or five, nothing happens. But if we double click Mickey Mouse, you can see that it's opened up our user form for us and pre-populated the information available to us for Mickey Mouse. If we close that and then get on Homer Simpson, you can see that it's now done the same for us again. So we're now really getting into the dynamic use of our file. The only problem that we have now is if I was to change this, so let's go Homer Simpson number one and hit submit, you can see that rather than overriding or updating this existing record for Homer Simpson, it's added a new row. So that's where we just now need to do a final little update to our, the user form in the terms of when we hit the submit button so that it can identify if that record already exists or if it should be added as a new record. So we now need to update that code in the user form. So we're just gonna go into user form, view code, and you can see this is the existing code we have um, as it stands so that when the submit button is pressed on the user form, all the information is gathered, it will find the next empty row, what's obviously going to be row five if we're looking at it now, and paste the information in for us. What we want to do is just apply a bit of logic that will say, okay, well, if it's already existing in our range, then therefore we want to take, or we want to paste into the row number of that existing record, or obviously if it's not, we want to go to continue on with this new row. So in order to do that, we're going to add another integer, so dim i row as integer. Um, so this will make sense as we step along here. So we've got sheet one defined and we've got the last row here. And this is obviously where the information is populated into our uh, Excel file. So this, in this section here, we now need to do, we need to have some logic. So we want to say logic to determine 
where to add record. Um, so there we go. This is the bit where we now need to add some additional code in here that will do this logic for us. So the first thing we're going to do, or well, basically what we are going to do, is do an if statement. So we're going to do an if statement that includes a match formula. So you might be familiar with the normal match formula available in Excel to basically try and find our um, if our record already exists. And it's also going to use if error. So this way I can get a, not confusing in terms of it's too technical, just because we're going to be dealing with if error. So obviously that can some obviously is going to give us the inverse of actually what we're looking for. And I think that makes sense, but we'll step through it. So the first thing we need to do is go if is error, open our brackets. So we're going to do application dot match. So this is how we can do a match function within uh, VBA. And we're going to say, hey, what's the text box 3.txt? So this is the value that we want to search for. We want to search for this in the range of sheet 1.range uh, C2 to C and I last row. And I may well just type this and then talk through what it's doing uh, once complete. That might be easier. And then, then. Cool, it might help if I actually do the and symbol rather than the number seven. And then go enter. Perfect. And then we can go down to here, end if. And we'll tidy all these space up in a second. So what this is saying is we're going to do this match formula here. And the match formula is this section you see here. What's going to happen is it's going to take the value within text box 3, which is our ID, and obviously this is the, the value in that text box. It's then going to do a match formula in this range here, so from C2 down to obviously how many rows, so at the moment to row 4. And obviously we want to use, we've got 0 here to do an exact match. What that's going to do is it's going to say, well, the match formula returns a number. So it would tell us the number or the placement of the value if it existed in this row. So let's say it was 100 or E1001. The return of the match function would give us the number 1. However, if it doesn't exist in that range, then the match function will return an error message. So it'll, because the value is not available. And that's why we've used is error. So because we've used is error, what this will now do is if our value is not available in that range, so it doesn't exist and therefore it's a new record, what's going to happen is this is error is going to return a true statement because what it's saying is if there's an error, is there an error in this uh, formula? If it doesn't exist, there is going to be an error, therefore it's going to return a true statement. So based on that, we have two options. If it is a true statement, so it's not available, then we want to add a new record. However, if it's not an error and the value is available there, then we obviously want to make sure we update the existing row. So how can we just do that? So let's go into if and go, let's just do a message box, so msg box, and we'll go new record. So this is the new record scenario. So this is saying if there is a true, and so there is an error here. What we're going to do is I row is going to equal um, I last row. So let's just bring that back in there. And it might make more sense to do this. So let's go I update this I row, I row, I row. So previously with our, um, our formula here, or not formula, our code, we were always adding our record into the next available row, which is I last row. But because we now have two options, it could either be a new record or it could be an existing record. This is why I've added I row. So I row can then obviously default to either I last row or it can default to the active cell row if it's an existing record that we want to update. So this is why we're using that if statement. We're basically using the if statement to define what I row is. And then obviously I can just refer to it in this code down the bottom here. So if it is a new record, then we've obviously got a little message box at the moment to say, oh, it's a new record. However, and if it is a new record, we want to place it into the next last row. However, if it's not a new record, then we want to make sure we update the existing row where that uh, record is currently occupied. Therefore, we can do message box, and then go existing record, like so. And therefore, I row is going to equal uh, active cell dot row, like so. And then we can just remove this information here, like that. We can remove that information from here. And 
that was not tidy. So hopefully that now seems logical. And let's just move that out. Perfect. So what's going to happen is when we add a new, or when a record is, when we're basically in the user form section, when we hit the submit button, what will happen is we'll do this quick validation to see if our ID already exists in this range. If it does already exist, it's an existing record, therefore we want to update the data contained for that record. Else, if it doesn't exist in that range, then we want to add it as a new row. So let's go through those two steps. So add new record. And we can see because we've done the add new record, it's gonna populate a new ID for us. So this is quite simple. We know it's a new record. And let's call this one uh, mini mouse, and then go submit. And we can see we've got a message box here. So it's done the validation for us. It said, okay, take this ID, does it exist in this range, what's highlighted here? No, it doesn't, therefore it must be a new record. Okay, so it's gonna submit it for us. However, if we double click on Donald Duck, and obviously we've got our information populated for us, including the ID, and let's say we change this to capital Donald, or Donald, like that, uh, Donald Duck one, or Donald one and Duck one. What it will now, or should do this time, is now, if we hit submit, yeah, you can see it's done the test, it's identified that this ID already exists in this range, and therefore it's identified it as an existing record, and because of that, what it's gonna do is gonna say, okay, well, this is the active cell here in A3, what is the row number? It's row three, therefore, populate this information into row three rather than add a new row. And you can see it's done just that. So that is how we can obviously build upon our last video to create this workable mini database for adding and amending existing data. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It was obviously quite a bit longer than our, our normal videos, but obviously it was quite an in-depth one to talk you through that process. I will make this file available to you. So if you want to download this exact file and use it um, basically either just to understand it better or if you want to build upon this for your own um, uses, then obviously feel free to do so. You'll find the link to this download in the description to this video. If you did enjoy the video, please do make sure you give the video a like. Uh, it's obviously not only greatly appreciated by me, but does help that all important YouTube algorithm. And if it's the first time uh, finding the channel or you've watched our videos before, please, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you're notified of all of our future videos. Uh, so lastly, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.